Now we're going to look at using StatKey to perform the bootstrap simulation for means and the technical details of how to do it. From the StatKey homepage, again, we're looking in the center column, Confidence Intervals, and this time we're going to look at the single mean, median, standard deviation. Now we're focusing primarily on the mean, but this tool does let you look at those other two statistics. So the first thing we need to do is get our data inside. So we go up to the Edit Data button. Unlike the proportions, this one's a little bit uh, more work to do. We're not just entering a couple numbers. So we can delete all the data that's in there already. And in this case, uh, you could either type it uh, one at a time with an enter between each number, so such as 12, 13, 11, whatever it might be, or uh, take the shortcut and copy paste it from another source. So I'll try to give you as many homework problems as possible with copy pasteable data. And you get it all in there. Now if you leave your first row uh, without a title up here, you need to make sure you uncheck the data has header row. Because what that will do is it will ignore your first uh, piece of data and you don't want it to ignore your data. So I unchecked that because I didn't have anything typed in and I clicked OK. Now, just like before, we're going to generate our samples, our resamples. And uh, the first one here I got was 7.216. And what that really represents is it took 25 uh, from the copy pasted population up here and randomly selected them to be part of this new sample. So I look at this, and even though my original sample only had one uh, 5.9 and one 6.1 here, I have three 6.1s, four of them actually, and no 5.9s. So that's going to happen. I'm going to end up with a, f a bunch of one thing and not as many of another on any particular sample. And the computer will automatically find the average of these 25 and plot that average over here. Generate another sample and it's going to be different. I have totally different values in here this time. It finds the average for me, uh, for me and plots it. Cut to the chase. Generate a bunch of these. And if you want to look at any individual resample that it did, you can actually just mouse over it and you can see over on the right how it will reflect exactly uh, which one you were looking at right here. So whatever uh, average this value came from, it will show you the actual sample that it created. So it keeps all that data right there. The key part for the confidence intervals is this idea of clicking the two tail and trying to see where the middle 95% or whatever percent happens to fall. If you're wondering why we pick the middle and not, uh, for example, the right tail uh, or the left tail, it's because the data is closest together in the middle. We have more data really close and on the ends it kind of sprawls out. So if we took data from the end, our interval would be really wide. But by taking data from the middle, we get the smallest interval that we can possibly get. So the 95% the of the data that's in the very center would be our 95% confidence interval, from 6.8 roughly to almost 7.4. We click on that. We can change it to 0.98, do a 98% confidence interval if you were interested in that, leaving 1% out here on the left tail and 1% out here on the right tail, because 98% is in the middle. And then this, these two numbers is the interval that you would report.